What's going on, everyone? Hey, welcome to the Midwest Outdoors podcast. I'm your host, Jim O'Neill, and thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys are ready for an action-packed show. We're gonna start with a little bit of news from right here in the Midwest. The college and high school Bassmasters were in Saginaw Bay, Michigan this past weekend. And although there was some rough weather that kept some of the anglers off the bay, there was an great results with tons of anglers that caught tons of fish. But it was a story of two tails, whether you're gonna fish for largemouth or smallmouth. And this is really something I wanna get into more in a later show because whether you're just fun fishing or you're tournament fishing, when you have a diverse body of water where you have multiple different species, right? Um, especially if they have different habitat, you know, sometimes they'll co-mingle. But when they have separate living places, you have to f- kind of decide where you're gonna spend your time. And out in Saginaw Bay, although they're harder to catch, it always seems like the ones who are targeting smallmouth tend to catch some bigger fish on average. Braden and Jack of Western Michigan University took home the two-day championship for the college series with 35 pounds and two ounces. So congrats to Western Michigan for their championship there on the college side. And then we have Carson and Maverick, awesome first name, of Grand Haven Bassmasters who had a one-day shootout and they scrapped up 17 pounds, four ounces for the win on the high school side. So congrats to you guys as well. So congrats to both the Grand Haven Bassmasters and Western Michigan University on their wins. But not only did they win the state championship, which is obviously a memory to have forever, but they qualified for the national championship. And all these anglers at the high school to college level, that is the end goal. So not only did the winners qualify, but some of the other high finishers qualified as well, depending on where they were in the point standings. And that completes the field for the year. It's, it's June, it seems early, but the regular season's over for the high school and college kids. So now the field is set for nationals and I can't wait to tune in for that because that's gonna be a heck of a shootout. Now on the pro side, we did have a tournament this past weekend. The MLF competed out in North Carolina. And we're just gonna mention it because a few shows again, we talked about Drew Gill and I said it's only a matter of time before he wins a true pro event. Well already done. Uh, Drew Gill from Southern Illinois is a champion with 58 pounds, 14 ounces on the Chowan River and uh, just a dominate, per, dominant performance. You know, he's in the top 10 all week long. The way the MLF does it, they kind of reset their weights and stuff. So again, he's truly showing he belongs with the best of the best. Now to wrap up tournament news, we actually have something that you Everyone at home, yes, I'm talking to you. You guys can compete for only $100 or 40 bucks a day if you go on a guided trip or something like that. The Ultimate Salmon Derby is about to start this weekend. And I say only 100 bucks because for $100, you're entered in the tournament for eight weeks long and you have an opportunity to win a boat every single week. I don't know about you guys, but in today's economy, hey, a boat, a chance even at a boat for a hundred bucks. Seems like one of the best deals going around. Now, speaking of other great things coming up, we have Father's Day this weekend and not everyone learns how to fish or enjoy the outdoors with their dad, but I sure did and I'm super appreciative of all that time. So what better way to give back to your dad or your role model in your life this Father's Day with a Midwest Outdoors subscription? We also right now have a really cool promo where you can take someone's picture and put it on your own custom cover of the Midwest Outdoors magazine. If you want more information on that, make sure you check out midwestoutdoors.com. We'll leave the link below. Now, before we get into the main conversation of this week's podcast, I was very fortunate to be able to get on and talk with the newest state record holder in the Midwest. That's right. We have a young lady that just beat the Ohio record for blue catfish. Without further ado, Jaden Parker. Hey, I am here now with Jalen and Mr. Parker. And guys, we're kicking off the news and the record section and the fishing reports all right here because Miss Jalen here, braces and all, is catching bigger 
catfish, bigger fish than 99.9% of the people in the world. Yep. It's crazy when you think about that, isn't it? Yeah. So Jalen, tell the people, what did you do a few weeks back? I caught the new Ohio State record blue catfish weighing in at 101.11 pounds. 101.1 pounds. And you caught it on a jug, correct? I did. Now, I know you never talk about a lady's weight, especially with her father right in front of you. <laughs> but when you when you talk about a teenage girl and a hundred pound fish, you guys probably weigh fairly close to each other. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little too close for my comfort. <laughs> no, that's 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 pretty normal, you know. But seriously, I mean it's one thing to have the leverage of a rod and reel to help you, but yeah. how does how does a young lady wrestle and bring in a hundred pound fish? Honestly, I don't know. I was talking about that the other day with my driver instructor, actually. She was asking me about it. And I was like, I don't know. When it comes to fishing, I can throw a 40 pound fish over my shoulder, but then I get home and I'm like, dad, I can't pick up this cinder block. Please help. Like, I just think it's the adrenaline Adrenaline. when it comes to fishing because you're just not thinking about it at all. Yeah. And it's just way easier. Water helps you a little bit too, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So it it drags us around a good bit. You kind of have to wear them out first. Yeah. So that's my next question. You know, I've, I've traveled the country bass fishing, you know, down to Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, and you, you start seeing more jugs floating around when you get to the Southern part of the United States and, you know, whether it's regulations or just culture, um, it's not something I've ever been embraced with. So explain the process a little bit of jug fishing. So for example, you just take like a Clorox jug and you tie line to it. We usually use about 200 pound test line just because we know that if it breaks, no, we got something serious going on because come on. And then you just take a hook and then your bait and then you just throw it out in the water and wait for a fish to bite it. Yeah. Yeah. And how long do you, do you like, do you have a time frame new, normally in mind or? <laughs> Is there a limit of how long they can sit, you know? What's the regulations to stuff like that? So the law with jug fishing in Ohio is you have to be in the water with your jugs. Like okay. you are not allowed to leave them unattended. Yeah. So with our jugs, we take a branch and we either like wrap the line around the branch mm-hmm. or we take a like a pretty thick branch and we run it through like the handle of the jug so that it's not going anywhere sure so technically it's just limb lining but there's just a jug on it so that we can see where we put them sure so a little bit a little bit like your swamp people like a little bit like alligator (laughs) hunting almost yep yeah yep and um are you putting a circle hook on? Are you adding weights? What kind of bait are you? Do you switch up baits? Do you have a, I mean, what did the big one come on? Is that a secret, you know, or? I guess we'll tell you. No, um, we use skipjack most of the time. We either use skipjack, shad, cherry chicken. We use a bunch of different stuff, but this fish specifically bought on, bit on a big piece of skipjack. Okay. Okay. We usually run 10 aught circle hooks. Yeah. And free free line and then no weight, or do you weight them down? No weight. No, no weight. No weight. About mm-hmm. 10, eight, 10 foot deep. Okay. And does that depend on how deep of water you're fishing over, or kind of that's yeah. the standard? Yeah. Yeah, it depends. We only do this about we can only do this about four or maybe five times a year when the river floods. Okay. Normally, normally we're on a boat on the river or fishing off the bank, but when the river that is normally 26 feet at our flood stage or at our, our normal pool goes up to 50 feet, then we're 30 feet high. So you can't take a boat out. You can't fish off a bank. So we go to the back creeks, get in a little two-man boat or a kayak and go put these lines out 
and and just have a blast doing something different. Yeah. So that's my next question. I, I, I saw the picture that went around, you know, online and it looks like I'm looking at a little Creek in the back. I mean, did that fish come out of like that water, like right there that I'm looking at? Yes. Yeah. Right, right at that like, spot. Right. Literally right behind it. There's like a little group of trees. That's exactly where he was caught. Like he was right there. And I mean, I would have to imagine, correct me if I'm wrong. It, you were shocked to see a fish that size in that water. No. Uh, no. Okay. We, we've, we've been, we've been doing this for on and off four or five years, maybe six years. And we have caught multiple big fish out of that, out of there. Yeah. Yep. Now, like I said, that Creek is normally five foot, six foot in some places deep. When it floods, it comes up to when it, when it really floods, it's, 25 foot deep wow and and up out of the bank so it's up in the, the trees yeah and we have caught multiple over 50 wow is it always two blues? over two over 60 184 wow is it always blues or do you get channels and flatheads too very few very few uh shovels or flatheads yeah channels hardly ever because we're using such big hooks and big bait sure channels usually don't mess with it too much, but it's usually 99% of the time blues. Yep. Very good. And you say, you know, it's restricted to time of year. Is it almost always spring, like during the melt and the flooding season or? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Occasionally we'll get to do it in the fall or, or, or late winter, but, but mostly spring. So I got a pencil in now early may southern ohio jug fishing <laughs> find a flooded creek and it, and it will happen yeah yep. you know and and when those creeks down do you catch anything out of it does it hold bait does it hold bluegill bass like um sometimes it it holds some shad or some white bass or or um some small channel cats but as far as blues and shovelheads no it's it's usually way too shallow so they physically do come hunting, looking for food once that. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I don't, I think we've learned a long time ago that they get out of that main current when it floods because there's so much current and so much yeah. debris. Yeah. And, and I guess they've learned that the, the bugs come out of the ground when it floods, mm -hmm. the bait fish go after the bugs Yep. and the catfish go after the bait fish. Yep. Circle of life. It is, yep. and it it is a hundred percent true that it works because there's other times we can go back there and there's, I mean, it's usually too low, but there's nothing there. Yeah, yeah. Now, Jalen, give me a little bit of a process on um, what happened in life. You know, after you caught this fish, I well, obviously, I blew up. <laughs> I was everywhere. I. Couldn't even go on Facebook because every post was just about me and I was tired of seeing it. <laughs> but I did probably a hundred interviews. I had four interviews at my school and then three more after school just in one day. And then what was it? Just was it two weeks ago? When we went to the, we went to the, meet the senator. We went to meet the senator, Oops, and he gave me a resolution for mm -hmm. that. That was super cool. It was like in front of everybody. It was in, it was not what I was expecting. I thought it was going to be like a little private thing. No, it was in front of everybody. Good thing you dressed up. Yeah, <laughs> but I've gotten a bunch of stuff sent to me just from random people like random companies just sending me catfish rigs hooks personalized towels so many things that i never would have thought would have came out of this i thought oh i just caught a fish like it's fish well i know how this works and i know you're spending hours and hours talking to people like me and i know you're not getting paid for that time so the very least you should get is some you know some hand me downs you know yeah. 
Um, I see you guys are rocking some shirts, you know, is, is that something yep. you guys worked with before or after the catch? Um, we don't actually work with them. This is a rod company called Mad Cats. Yep. They're our favorite rods that we use. They're like, just the rods that we use. We have like 16. We're addicted to them and it's really bad. <laughs> well, listen here, Mad Cats. You guys see these people looking? Free free advertising right here, you know. Yeah, they don't yeah. work with us. They don't work with us either. So you guys are just <laughs> right. so send this girl a rod, okay? Um, but they're no, a great awesome. company. They're, they're a good company. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so you do catch. Uh, that was my next question. Good transition. You know, um, obviously you don't need a rod for jug fishing, but you you said you only get to jug fish a few times a year. You know, so yeah. um, this was not a fluke. You are a true outdoors girl. You yep. love being out there with your dad and your friends. Yeah. Um, so what else What else do you keep your time occupied with? Is, is it always catfish? Do you like to hunt? Do you like to bass fish? What What do you like to do? Um. Well, when I was younger, I hunted more. But hunting, I never really picked, on, picked up on it as much. I mostly picked up on fishing. Sure. But I just like being outside. I just like being outside, soaking up the sun, and hanging out with my family. It just, and my whole family, we're all outdoors people, so we all like to be outside all the time. Mm -hmm. And then fishing is just a thing that comes along with it, because you can be outside with your family. So it's just a win-win for us. Hey, it's it's a good lifestyle to have. Mr. Parker, how about... How about we'll throw it to you to to wrap up the interview before we say goodbye. Um, Southern Ohio, right? Part of our Midwest. We are Midwest Outdoors. Um, yep. What's what's going on over there right now? You know, it's been about a month since you guys were jug fishing. So what are the conditions like and um, how will you be chasing, whether it's catfish or crappie or whatever you're chasing? Um, the river is pretty much at normal pool right now. Yep. So we can take the boat out. A, a bit we jalen and i just fished uh pretty much friday and saturday and and we done pretty well we caught quite a few flatheads and two mm -hmm. decent blues jalen caught a 32 pounder yep and i caught a 39 pounder see and i'm still looking for a 30 pounder you know i've got a few <laughs> 20s i've gotten a few in the 20s but <laughs> we caught we caught multiple shovel heads in the 20s yeah yeah yeah. Well, hey, Jalen, I just wanted to check in with you. I want to say congrats on the big fish. Thank um, you. Thanks for joining the podcast, even though, you know, out in the woods, sometimes it's hard to get connected. <laughs> yep. It was a struggle. That's all right. But hey, keep grinding, keep catching fish. And, you know, I, I truly believe the way you, you talk, the way you're so passionate about it. If this is, you know, a place in the world you want to go after school, after you're done with school, you know, into the outdoor industry. I think there's a place for you, but you know, keep grinding, keep catching fish. You might not catch one ever that size again, but never say never, never say never. That's exactly how it should be because I said never before and you saw what just happened. So we, we know where there's a bigger one. Okay. All right. <laughs> Well, hey, you know, like I said, next April, you know, maybe we get a camera down and we document the whole thing. <laughs> well, when when we when we first caught that fish, we we weighed him on a small scale that only went to a hundred pounds. Yeah. And when he bought him that out, we knew he was over a hundred. So that's when we called the game wardens and the game wardens showed up. It took us it took them over three hours to try to find a certified scale to get him weighed on. And we couldn't because it was Sunday. So we had to take him home and put him in our pond in a holding tank overnight until the next day to take him to, to a feed store to get him officially weighed. Well, you you know, if a fish that size, most catfish anyways, if you stress them, they, they regurgitate all their food. Yep. So when we first weighed him on a big scale, he was between 107 and 108. But when we, by the time he stayed all night in our tank and got him up there and weighed him, he was 101. Yeah. So we released him. So we know where there's a bigger fish at. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, um, 
I'm glad you brought that up because that's what we'll end with is, um, you know, how I want to give you guys a round of applause truly for how much you had to go through to not only get that certified officially, um, but keeping the fish alive and releasing it alive. I think that's incredible. Um, yep. If I had more time, I'd love to get into how or why you had a holding tank for a hundred pound catfish or how that was <laughs> constructed within minutes to put it in. Um, but awesome story. Hey, Jalen, keep kicking butt. All right. Enjoy your summer and then get back into the books. Okay. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I want to thank Jalen and her dad for joining us. Obviously, they're is a perfect example of an amazing daughter and father memory that they'll have forever. We're gonna to jump to a quick commercial, but make sure to come right back because we're going to be with Dumper Dan talking about what an amazing bite the coho salmon were this spring and what we have to look forward to right here in our backyard on Lake Michigan coming up right after this. Midwest Outdoors Magazine helps you enjoy the outdoors, giving you the best information on where to go, what to use, and how to use it. With fishing maps marked by the pros, nature notes, in-depth interviews, and much, much more. Your subscription gets you 10 big issues of the best in fishing, hunting, and the great outdoors. Plus, Midwest Outdoors Digital Edition gives you dozens of extra articles. Sign up now at mwomag.com. That's mwomag.com. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for being patient during that quick commercial break. But hey, we are back with a visitor of the show already, our friend Dan from Dumper Dan's up in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. How are you, Dan? I'm doing well. How are you? You know, I'm doing good. I got a full stomach over here because uh, this morning I had some salmon and eggs, you know, um, got to come home from our little trip together with a freezer full of coho salmon and uh we're, you know, a couple couple weeks back now, and I'm still reaping the benefits of it. Nice, nice. I know we caught a bunch of fish, and yeah, they're they're good to eat, and uh, hopefully you got some on the grill and smoke some and throw some as well. Absolutely. We're doing a little bit of everything. Speaking of, I was real quick before we dive into it, a little fishing report right now. What's kind of going on up there? Yeah, when you were here, obviously everything was closer to shore, you know, just a few weeks ago. Um, we're mm -hmm. fishing like 20 to 40 feet of water. Um, close to shore, huge pods of bait fish right now off the port of Sheboygan, which is normal uh, for springtime coho fishing. Um, we're still catching some there, but they started to move offshore the last few days, and that's normal going into June. Um, the water warms up four, five, six degrees, the bait fish push off, you know, maybe a mile offshore. Instead of 20 to 40 feet of water, now we're fishing like 60 to 120. Um, and what's unique with Sheboygan is we got deep water access here, so 100 feet of water you're only out a mile so everybody can pretty much access this with, with a charter boat or a private boat or any kind of deep worthy boat yeah you know that was something i i noticed when i was up by you well first of all the bite was incredible you know um I, i've told you i think some will find this to be surprising is i've never been on a trolling charter boat before you know yeah. and in in my brain granted ignorance is bliss right um my brain i was like you know trolling it's it's just different than fishing right and i just didn't know I, I i've never thought i'd really truly enjoy it and i get out there and again i know we are a little blessed by the day but wow it was truly it was truly incredible i mean um i know greg jones was with us from midwest and uh you know it's like how many times in your life have you seen four or five go off at a time? Me and him said zero. I'm sure you've been out there for years, so maybe a few times, but um, right. Quinn Truple, you know, that's what we figured out the name, the Quinn Truple. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, the action, I mean, this, I've been doing this, this is my 39th year in business. And prior to that, I first made it on charter boats when I was a teenager. So 
I started dumper dams at 18 years old, but at 12 years old, I was working on charter boats. So I've wow. been around for three plus years and I've seen some good coho fishing, but what we had this year, from May 1st to currently right now in the June is almost the best I've ever seen. Um, it's incredible. And not just the Port of Sheboygan, but I talk to people all up and down the, the Western shorelines of Lake Michigan, charter boat operators. I'm good friends with many of them from different ports. And they're they're catching them right now from Door County all the way to the state line of Kenosha in the uh, Illinois, Winthrop Harbor. So that tells you right there, there's a lot of fish along the shoreline here in Lake Michigan, these coho salmon and, and the bite's just incredible. And right now Sheboygan's like the hot spot and uh, you can go out and get your limit pretty quick. And, and there's some of the best eating fish in the lake. They really are. So really, really cool to, to see this fishery blossom like this with this spring fishery. And next year, I, I can't even wait. I mean, next year is gonna be, I think even better. They keep planting more and more of them. We have a lot of bait fish, so that's ginormous for us here on Lake Michigan. Yeah, I agree. You know, um, even for me, when I'm going out, you know, bass fishing or perch fishing on the south end, uh, the last couple of years, we've definitely seen more bait, yeah, at least pushed in shallower, right? Um, right. The, the alewives seem to be coming back a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. The coho size, uh, it's fun, right? Because I kind of chase them from St. Joe's, Michigan, down to Chicago, and then back up to your area in Sheboygan. Yeah. And it's a fun little month or six week kind of transition that they kind of take, and you can kind of follow them all the way around the lake. However, I've never fished them as north as you are. And this year, I saw the benefit of fishing up in the Wisconsin side because the fish exponentially grow in that journey. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. And I mean, last year, um, 2023, we had a very good coho fishery. The fish were running, I think, a little smaller in size last year. Mm -hmm. um, we did film a show with Greg Jones and uh, Dennis LaPel, uh, early spring show for coho, and limited out. We did well in the same spot that we took you out fishing. Uh, yeah. But this year, it seems even like more fish, but they're stocky, like, four to eight pound cohos, you know, five to six pounds is average, but they're, they're thick. I mean, the flays are not as thick as like a king filet, but they're nice thick meat, you know, and, and they're really good to eat. And, and there's just a good size or, you know, they got some, some meat on them. And uh, that's what I've noticed this year over the last couple of years. And like I said, next year is going to be very interesting. And a lot of my clients are already booking for next year for spring action, because you can come out in spring, you know, pound on these coals, get them on the grill, enjoy them, um, and then come back in July, August, September and try for the steelhead and the king. So you can kind of do, get the best of both worlds throughout the season here. Absolutely. And, you know, just something I was kind of curious about is I, I do see that as a pattern, you know, people, uh, guides are catching the coho in let's say March through early June. And then uh, the captains that troll the shallow water, you know, near the harbors in the fall, late fall, once they're coming back in, they might grab some, you know, later in the season. But why is it that you don't see a lot of guides or captains go after the coho in that midsummer range? Do they go super deep? Do they go super north? Well, what they do is they do, like I just mentioned, you know, at the start of this podcast is, uh, you know, they're, they're thick along the shoreline. The water temp is too cold out deeper, and that's where the bait is, and they're within a half mile of shore, and that's normal for April, May. Um, and it's great because they're all stacked in, like, cordwood, you know. But right. now they start to enter out, you know, into the lake uh, with the water being 52, 54 degrees now, so warmer than in the spring. Yeah. And they spread out a little more. Um but we do catch them with June is a variety month and May is all coal. June is a variety month. Both are great months. But now, like currently, we're catching steelhead. You can see on our Facebook page, some kings, a lot of coal was yet. Um, I wish these fish were here all year. I mean, it's a good question and because it's, it's just something extra to put in a cooler. But we don't see them too much come the third or fourth week of July. By about the 20th of July, we're not catching too many of them at all, but then the kings are going strong and the steelhead, some lake trout. Um, but then we do see them again on the return for the spawn. They're the last ones to come in the Harper area to spawn. The, the kings will come in, the males come in, and the females uh, in September, late August. But then these coals come in usually early October, late September, and then they're really big. They're, I mean, 12, 14, 15 pounders that are spawning. Um, 
we will see them again, but it'll be spawning season late in the year. But yeah, they, they kind of thin out and go out into the lake. We, we feel that they just get too far offshore is what we're thinking. And we're not going to motor out, you know, 20 miles and go three to four miles to catch 20 pound king salmon. So sure. we just don't breed them anymore. Yeah, that makes sense. Plus, as fun as the coho action was, I, I'm ready to try my hands in the king now because the kings yeah. are my absolute favorite to catch from shore. They're my favorite to jig up in my bass boat. So I can only imagine they yep. scream those drag on them trolling reels. Oh, absolutely. And that's like, like I mentioned, you know, if you can get out here in the spring like you did and Greg Jones and everybody and a lot of our clients and, and get them coals and come back for the Kings, it ain't going to get any better than that. I mean, it's the two of our best fish that we catch, the big Kings and the eat grilling size coals. And uh, I always said to Greg, I see it on TV all the time. I mean, the coho is like the filet mignon of Lake Michigan fish. I mean, it's, it's very delicious, but the Kings are good on the grill too, but everybody comes here for the fight you know on the big kings that's why this fishery is a world-class fishery i mean it's amazing how you can go from these numbers to bigger fish to spawning fish in the fall and have a six-month solid season on lake michigan yeah no doubt no doubt now what speaking of the kings you know um it's it's truly the fish that kind of got me obsessed with fishing you know um i tell people this if, if i could you know, if Midwest Outdoors happened to include Florida, you know, I think I'd like our base to be there because there's just so many things that pull hard in the salt water, you know. But those kings, they haven't lost their salt water heritage, you know. Um, I mean, you can tell those are ocean fish. Um, and people who don't know what I'm talking about, we can get into that in a minute. But they're they are they're incredible to fight they are they're massive they're they're angry especially in the fall when they start developing their kipe and get teeth on them and stuff yeah. um but what what are um what are the major differences that you see fishing for the coho versus the king uh as far as what like the fight or well obviously they're bigger fish right gonna fight harder um I mean, gear wise, um, we, we talk about fishing shallow for the coho, you know, do you get to fish that shallow for the yep. kings? I know in the fall you yep. do, but, um, this, you know, usually what are you fishing deeper water for them? Um, yep. Yeah. I like the coho, um, you know, like we did with you, you know, everything's in the top 20 or 30 foot range. Um, as they move offshore, like they are now a mile to three miles out they're 25 to 50 feet down so you kind of run stuff a little longer a little deeper for the coho but um the king are usually below them like right now currently we're fishing 80 foot out to 120 uh we're running eight inch flashers uh with flies on wire divers we're running them on downriggers we're running them on 100 150 and 200 copper board setups so what that means is we're fishing these kings below the cohos and that's kind of where they're at when you see these pods of bait fish come through on the graph you know, it's it's say we're in 100 feet of water. There'll be a wall from like 60 to 100 of bait fish, and then all of a sudden you see hook marks all over the top of that, and fish chasing. And them are the kings usually that are right in that pot of bait fish. And the coho are always higher in the water column. The kings are always in the middle of the water column, um, and then the lake trout are closer to the bottom. And we are running a lake trout rig out there right now in our middle downrigger that catches three, four quality lake trout every trip. And, that's just one rod dedicated to lake trout. So again, variety month of June with the king suspended, the coal is up high. Um, also, uh, rainbows, steelhead, we switch for the spoons up high, like on lead core, one, three, five color lead core off the planer boards and run spoons for the steelhead and the rainbows. We just caught one the other day that was 16 and a half pounds. The thing was huge. Um, mm -hmm. That came on a spoon on a planer board. So all different sets for these fish, but you know, the target of Kings, it's a lot of eight inch flasher fly combinations. Sometimes they'll run 11 inch flasher fly combinations, but on our deeper sets or downriggers or, or lead core, or our, our downriggers are copper board setups and our wire divers. And that's what's unique with Sheboygan, especially with variety month of June going into July, is we'll run everything. So I'll catch a variety of everything from top to bottom. Uh, eventually, when the cohort are kind of gone, um, then we'll just target kings and we'll put all king sets out and we'll be fishing 120 feet of water and everything will be down, you know, 75 to 100 down. Sure. And when you when you talk about how they can be staggered like that, you know, the, all the different fish, is it 
is it uncommon to double up on two different species on different water columns? I mean, will they hang out in the same general facility? Oh, yeah. Vicinity together? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, like I said, them all as a bait fish, you'll see the bigger hook marks in that, in them on the top and in the middle of that bait, but then up higher, you'll see some smaller hook marks that are cool. And oh, absolutely. I mean, you can pop a king on a wire diver, which, you know, like you know, a king salmon's at least a minute battle on a big four year old, sure. you know, uh, 20 pound plus king. So now you're fighting that one. Then a board takes off on a spoon with a rainbow jumping way behind the boat. And one of the customers, I see a fish jumping back there. He's on our line. And then we'll get a coho off a slide diver or off another planer board. So Multiple hookups are common on all these different species at this time of the year. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you start speaking about Sheboygan and the differences there. And, you know, when I was up there, I have noticed that it, it is quite different than a lot of the other Wisconsin harbors. You know, um, you got the biggest one I think of right away is McKinley in Milwaukee, right? Um and although Milwaukee has the Milwaukee River South, the harbor itself doesn't have a river, you know, going into it. Um, port, port's cool, but the the water coming out of there is coming out of a plant, and it's very, very shallow, right? Usually crystal clear water. Um, yep. And then you got Sheboygan that, like you said, has access to deep water pretty quick, but is fairly shallow in the river and kind of actually has a river fishery. Oh, absolutely. And like you witnessed when you were out with us and, you know, we have that natural, you know, our Sheboygan River is miles long, you know, all the way up to the Kohler Dam of Kohler, Wisconsin. And the runoff of rain we get creates a, a stain colored water, which is a unique and, and great for us. Um, and what that does is that flows out into Lake Michigan. And if we get a west wind, it'll pump way out into the lake. And if we get a south wind or north wind, it'll come out of the harbor like we fished and you'll fish in that stained water or on the break of it right in front of the harbor. And honestly, I, I fished a lot of different places, you know, down south and ice fishing and everything. And my favorite bite, and I'm not just saying it because I'm from Sheboygan, but I think when the fish are in front of the harbor, it's my favorite spot in the whole world. I mean, it really is because you're always circling back. You're always in fish. Your lures are always in bait fish and salmon, and it's mostly salmon. And it's just so unique. And when they bite, it just came on, man. It's just lights out. And and that can be with the Kings, you know, July, August, September. And that can be with the Coho in May. Um, my favorite spot, definitely. And that color, that color of that water has got to be like a coffee colored, colored stained water. If it's milky, it's not good. If it's, and that usually means too much rain or too much wind. Or if it's green in color, it's not good because that means no rain. Yeah. But Coffee colored stained water. I mean, just great fishery in there. Um, I used to fish tournaments years ago before I got real busy in chartering. I fished a lot of different ports and I, I never found one as good as Sheboygan. I mean, there's a lot of great ports for offshore fishing, but yep. when it comes to river mouth harbor fishing, Sheboygan's pretty hard to beat. And end of the lighthouse, 32 feet of water on the North Pier. South Pier is about 17. Um, so you got depth there, like you mentioned. Um, and What's unique about Sheboygan beyond that is you go straight out of the harbor, you got clay bottom. You go to the north, you got rock and clay. And what that means is that'll hold bait fish when the water's warm because that rock clay is colder. And you go up to 80, 90 foot north of town all the way up to like Whistling Straits Golf Course, and there'll be pods of bait in there when the water's lukewarm. So that's that. And to the south, we have all sand south of the plant, which is our lake trout area so we can bounce bottom for lake or so we got clay rock sand river mouth flowing out natural river got it all you really do and deep water access yes very diverse there you can although maybe frustrating if you're not if the plan a ain't working that day you can switch up and start doing something else nearby yep exactly and we do that once in a while there'll be times my my captains will take the fleet of six tumper dan boats out and we're geared up to fish the harbor all of a sudden they're not quite biting the way we like we make a pass or two in the morning maybe get one two fish or nothing we bail and then we had to power up and get out to where we need to be and and continue on but uh but sheboygan that just it's so unique that way and you know some some ports you got to travel and people always ask how far do we travel to get out into the lake and i said we can go a few blocks to a few miles and that's it out of sheboygan where other ports you know you can sometimes you got to go 10 20 miles you know and 
when you're dealing with weather and stuff too, and you know, you want to kind of the shorter runs kind of nicer, you know, and that's what we have here. Yeah. I feel like you get more time fishing actually than you do driving. That too. Not yeah, that too. That's a good point, you know, and, and our, our trips are five, six and eight hours daily. So our six hours probably are most common right now, half day trip. But you know, if you do a five hour trip, I mean, you're fishing four of the five, like you saw or more. So yeah. you're getting a lot of your time trolling and not just running to the spot. And although maybe not the average, you know, results, so don't expect it, but you might only have to fish for an hour and you got your limit. You never <laughs> like know. Like you did. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly. Right. Yeah. So let's talk about these fish for a second, right? Because we love talk, we love catching them and everything. But if it wasn't for what mankind and what the DNR and the and the government does, um, you know, it wouldn't be here. And I think I think that's the biggest shock. I tell people every year that these salmon aren't just, you know, just living. They aren't just reproducing like crazy. They aren't native, you know. A lot of no. people are shocked to hear that. Oh, yeah, you're you're totally right. And a lot of customers don't even realize that they stock the lake, and they've been stocking it since the early 60s. They started with the coho, and then they went to, you know, the kings, and, and then everything in between, which is rainbow, uh, or steelhead and then brown trout lake trout lake trout's native to the lake obviously um but there is a little bit of natural re reproduction more so on the michigan side than the wisconsin side but it would never support the fishery so we need the stocking that's what the license fee money goes for um here for you know anglers when they buy their license season license or a two-day license goes towards that stocking and um i was on a board for many years i'm not any longer i just i don't have the time to do it anymore but i I was on there for seven years. I was a vice president of an association here in Wisconsin. And it was great that I got to go to the Capitol building of Madison, the DNR office, and bring them our results along with a lot of members that were on our board and whatnot, different charter boat captains, also some business owners that did not charter. So we had a good mix of people and we, we took it to the DNR telling them what we're seeing. You know, and we have healthy fish the past five to six years. They're heavy like the coals are now, the kings were last year. Um, and we have a lot of bait in the lake and that's important. And I've been up and down this roller coaster for years in the bait fish population. And uh, right now it's booming. It's There's floating alewife out there right now that have a die off. And then the bellies of the fish that consume these alewife are full of them. So yep. we're in a good position right now. And, and, what they did is they added stock. Um, in the last seven years, we doubled our king stock from 870,000 kings in Wisconsin to 1.5 million. Wow. That's huge. Um, Large coal, state, it, I believe, in the country. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, to double that is making a big difference right now. We had a great king fishery the last couple of years. I think this year and next year are going to be just awesome because um, of all the bait and all the stock. Um, and then the coal has increased. Um, and the steelhead, they increased. Uh, we added some brook trout. We're trying to bring the brook trout back, which is a shoreline fish for the pier anglers. And back in the day, I used to catch them trolling. Um, so we're bringing them back. The only thing is they went to the seaferel and brown trout, which is a great strain of brown trout. Um, but we used to have the German browns and the seaferelins, and now we don't have the German browns anymore, but we have the seaferelins. So we lost some of our browns in stock. The reason why, um, is it's an expensive fish to stock yeah yeah yep. you pretty. hit it right on they're, pretty. They're, they're like an art they're, it's like a piece of art a german brown you know it is i have one in my office right above me right here it's a 20 pound german brown and it's mm -hmm. a gorgeous fish to catch but they decided with adding all these other you know what do you want give or take you know here on what we're going to stock so they asked us and we said you know we don't want to cut the browns it wasn't our choice but they said that if you want to double up on salmon and make this better salmon fishery, which is what everybody wants. Um, brown trout's more of a spring thing. You know, you don't troll for them ever really in July, August, in the early September, or late June. Yeah. We thought, yeah, keep the sea for Ellen's coming. They're, they were going to cut the German browns no matter what. So we didn't have a tree. Um, and that it, it is what it is. But our fishery is great right now. It's it's It turned for the better. And I mean, this next, you know, five, six years is going to be unbelievable. Yeah. And I think, you know, granted, like you said, you didn't want them to go anywhere. It's not like you elected them or the board elected them off, you know, but it, unfortunately life is money-based, right? 
and the Browns are beautiful, but there's only so many people really profiting off them, you know, whether it's ice fishing or um, fly trips in the creeks, you know, it's much less market where, like you said, you guys are catching the cohos and the kings deeper water. And that's the meat right. you want to eat. It tastes better than a brown. Browns don't live four years and die. They can live for many, yep. many years. So yep. it's more common to catch and release a trout than it is a salmon, I would say. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, you got to remember another thing I didn't bring up is is the hatchery space. You can only produce so much. You have so much hatchery space in Wisconsin, and it's full. So, you know, if we're going to double up on kings and add more coho, which is working right now, mm -hmm. um, you got to give or take with something. And like I said, they just the, the German browns got too pricey. So they went with the, they've always had the sea for Ellen. So they're, they're a good brown. Um, but we have everything. So, I mean, we have the best of everything. And we still have a good April fishery for browns. We did target them this year. I did put the dump band boats in April 10th this year. And we ran brown trout trips in April and did well on them. So they're there. And, but now we got everything. And it's, it's, yeah, just one heck of a fishery right now. And, I mean, I always say world-class fishery because the closest place to get what we're getting right now is Alaska, probably, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, the king salmon got me into fishing, so I'm very in tune with what's going on with them. And the number, the size number in Wisconsin is starting to get closer to the size of the Alaskan fish. You know, back in the, back in the day, you used to be able to catch 70 60 50 pound kings in alaska but those are days seem to be over um and unless you're going to go to patagonia argentina which seems to be the last true place to catch a giant king um we are unbelievably blessed honestly that right here oh yeah that in the midwest we have one of the greatest salmonoid fisheries in the world oh yeah absolutely and i mean just uh a fact, last year, 2023, I have an in-house taxidermist by me that picks up once a week. You can get your fish mounted through me, awesome. um, and you, you get it shipped to you and everything else. And last year, we had 65 fish come through me just in mounting. You know, some took their fish home and went to their taxidermist, our customers. But uh, that being said, 65 fish, I mean, 60 70% of them were kings, and they were between... 25 and 35 pounds last year so some really nice hefty kings that got mounted here at dumper dan's you know with their taxidermist and um the biggest king caught out of sheboygan ever um was a gentleman from germantown that was on my boat that i captained dumper dan one back in the day this was years ago it was 40 pounds um and back then you know you had some bigger fish overall but now i think you gotta the dnr is trying to make a solid you know number of weight class for a average four-year-old also have a shot at a 30 pounder and not all smaller kings so right now an average weight of a four-year-old king is 18 19 pounds that's very good um and there's a lot of 25 like i just mentioned the 30 35s out there so them are big fish you know and, and they're full of bait and there's a lot of bait there right now for them to eat so they'll continue to grow and i think that is you know whether it's whether it's a reflection of the temperature of the lake or just the bait itself, like you said, I, I think that's just a known difference, you know, um, from lake trout and largemouth bass in New Buffalo, Michigan, being bigger the last two years to our lake trout and yellow perch here in Chicago being oh. significantly larger the last two years. And now, you know, my my first my first cover of Midwest Outdoors was an 18 pound king out of port just to the south of you guys. You know, I are sorry, not king, coho, an 18 pound coho. And I mean, that's a massive fish. And you start talking about these 30 pound kings, they're massive fish. Yeah, they are. And I mean, God, there's so much fun to catch. And I mean, a 30 pound, 25 to 30 pound king is going to be a 30 minute battle. He's going to make three runs of 150 to 200 yards. Okay. he's gonna tire you out it's like and they fight hard and then try and get them in the neck because they're so big you know and you know, they're fun i mean it's, it's it, yeah it gets your heart throbbing i can tell you that and and uh, i'm looking forward to it because we're starting to catch kings now the biggest one we just caught it's on my facebook page it was 23 and a half pounds just a few days ago uh on comfort and one my number one boat but 
Uh, and then that big 16 and a half pound steelhead, that was a big one too. But the fish, they're going to get bigger. I mean, now we're going to take those our boats. Those are going to be how big in yeah. the fall, you know? Yeah. Going to keep oh, yeah. And, and we're, we're targeting everything right now. So it's fun for us to really go after the whole the whole show, you know, and and uh, we're busy, very busy. And, you know, on, you know, on our reservations, our phone rings like all winter long for reservations for summer. So we try and get everybody dialed in exactly where they want to be and what kind of fish they want to target and this and that. And, and like you saw too, I mean, I got, you know, lodging options. I, I own a lot of condos on the riverfront. I got a really unique riverfront store, apparel, dumper dance stuff, um, beverages, snacks you meet there to, to gather with us before you go out on our six boat fleet so lodging fishing the store would pretty much the one stop shop hey dan you know why i love having you on here because i didn't even have to cue you to get into that as we are getting towards the end of the interview you know admit you make my life easier so i appreciate it but Thanks. no absolutely and i hope you guys enjoy uh you know we're showing you some footage right now of when we were out the other day and it is truly a unbelievable setup. You have dinner right across the street. You got coffee shops, you got markets, you got really everything there in the summer. I'm sure um, the family could, you know, stay with you or down the street if there's, if they need more room and they could probably fish right off the river at night when they get done fishing okay. with, you, you know, go catch yep. some flatheads or channels in the river afterwards. Well, some do. Some bring their own tackle. And I do have spinning rods in my store. I don't rent them out. I just borrow them out. And if guys want to, you can walk right out on the south or north pier from my place and walk on the pier, fish the river. So I do borrow rods out to customers here and there and they enjoy that and stuff. But walking distance to all the restaurants, bars, grills, mini golf. We have Blue Harbor Resort uh, Conference Center and Water Park. Um, the beaches are right by us. And you park the car and you're walking wherever you want to go and that it's really really unique it really is and um i know the first time greg jones ever came here and we filmed a show many many years ago we were walking up the boardwalk and he goes dumper this reminds me of like the florida keys it just it, yeah. it just looks like the florida keys and it's super clean here everything's really organized and you got boats traveling and kayaks and sailboats it, it's really cool to see it here. We call it our fisherman's boardwalk on the Sheboygan River and walking distance to everything. So, yeah, definitely get here, check it out, check out our Facebook page. We post every day pictures I do, uh, videos, um, and then also dumperdan.com. Um, but get on out here, even if you have your own boat, bring it. Uh, we got a beautiful boat landing on the lakeshore, uh, Harbor Center Marina, and you can access the lake with your own vessel if so be or come charter fishing with us. And plenty of people do, you know, um, that, 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 uh, parking lot was overflowing when I was there. It was, it was, so it was a lot of people here. You don't want to fight the crowd, you know, and you don't want to figure out a fishery by yourself for the first time, you know, call dump and, uh, he'll get you out there. And whether it's, you come out annually or semi-annually, like you said, do the spring fishing and the summer fishing, or just come out one time and then you can go try yourself, you know, but it's always good to kind of get an idea of what's going on. Absolutely, absolutely. And we have all the equipment, all the tackle on all the boats. And we do fish cleaning, bagging, and freezing. That's all included, which is really nice. Some guys don't do that. We do. Um, so we take care of everything for you and make it very convenient for you. And if if you don't ever never done this kind of fishing before or any fishing, we teach you how to do it. We're trolling for them. We have a first mate and a captain on each boat. Our boats are all equipped with autopilot, so we can both get back there and help out. And we'll show you how to crank them in and reel into the grill. Very good. Well, hey, Dump, I appreciate you joining us. Again, this is Dan from Dumper Dan, Dan, everyone. Um, like you said, give it a follow, give a like, book them today um, for next year, for this year. Tons of fishing time still to go. And you have such a large fleet. Even if you're, even if you have a busy day, you'll tr we'll try to squeeze you in somewhere around there, right? Absolutely. I, I will do that. And even if we're overfilled, like we were this last weekend, I had people call and I had nine, nine or 10 boats last Saturday. I got uh, other charters parked around me. One's my maintenance guy, mechanic and friend of mine. One does glass work for me, makes chairs and this and that. So they're great guys too. And I trust them and I can get you in my building and on their boat through me. So I can always try and get you on the water if it's a last minute booking, but try and book ahead of time because my phone starts ringing already late January, early February and um, and get on one of the dumper Dan boats. We've got a great crew here, over 20 employees and 
the captains are very experienced. The mates are a lot of fun, and uh, you're going to love it. I mean, it's, it's just outstanding. Hey, if you do a large group, you got a chance that you go home with more meat in value <laughs> than you pay for for the day, and you have a memory that lasts a lifetime. Dan, Absolutely. I want to thank you, and uh, hey, maybe we'll, you know, we've been talking about doing a special podcast. Maybe maybe in a month or two, we'll get that done, all right? Let's do it. Maybe we can do it live on the lake, right? Yeah, that's what we're thinking. That's what we're thinking. So, All right, well, thanks for everything. I really do appreciate it. Absolutely. Everyone, this is Dumper Dan from Dumper Dan's Charter Fishing Service out of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Midwest Outdoors Magazine helps you enjoy the outdoors, giving you the best information on where to go, what to use, and how to use it. With fishing maps marked by the pros, nature notes, in-depth interviews, and much, much more. Your subscription gets you 10 big issues of the best in fishing, hunting, and the great outdoors. Plus, Midwest Outdoors Digital Edition gives you dozens of extra articles. Sign up now at MWOMag.com. That's MWOMag.com. I hope you guys enjoyed that interview with Dumper Dan. Every time I talk to him, I feel like I'm learning more and more about the incredible fishery we have right here in our backyard. Now, earlier, I told you how Father's Day is coming up, and well, if you guys are in the doghouse, or maybe you need to bribe Dad for a little more love, you know, we're gonna talk about this incredible rod and reel combo we got from Lou's, and we're gonna go over it right now. Hey guys, today we are out on the pond with the custom light lose setup here. And this has been an absolute pleasure to use for the last month. Um, this specific combo here is the top water jerk bait combo. So it's really great because I throw a lot more jerk baits in the spring. So we just got done with that. But now the water's in the upper 70s, getting to the 80s, and there's no better time to throw some top water. If you know anything about throwing a jerk bait or throwing a popper, it requires a lot of action, a lot of casts, and consistently working that bait. That's why it's crucial you have a light weight combo. Now, this custom light is the lightest reel that Luz has ever come out with. The rod is super light. Not only do they have carbon plates on the side of the reel, they also have the EVA foam and the aluminum bearings in this reel to make it super light. Not only that, it's low profile, so you can hold it in your hand really nice and have no discomfort throughout a whole day of fishing. Another great feature about this reel and rod is how far you can throw a bait. Um, between the 11 bearings in the reel and the play and the action of the rod, it allows you to load up and cast that bait a mile, which is super important when you're chasing school and fish because you don't want to spook them. And just any fish in shallow water, which a lot of top water fish are because they hear us better than a fish in deeper water. Now, the nice thing about it is when you're working these baits, the rod does a lot of the work for you. It's a medium action, moderate, fast tip. So all you have to do is barely move that wrist and that bait is popping or it's walking, whichever one you prefer. Pair this all with the chic look, the carbon fiber design, the wind grip here. No matter if it's cold, wet, stays in your hand, feels comfortable. I don't know about you guys, but talking about this rod just makes me want to fish with it. If you want to check out this combo or any other products from the Custom Light series, check out lose.com. Midwest Outdoors Magazine helps you enjoy the outdoors, giving you the best information on where to go, what to use, and how to use it. With fishing maps marked by the pros, nature notes, in-depth interviews, and much, much more. Your subscription gets you 10 big issues of the best in fishing, hunting, and the great outdoors. Plus, Midwest Outdoors Digital Edition gives you dozens of extra articles. Sign up now at MWOMag.com. That's MWOMag.com.
All right, everyone. Well, hey, just like that, we are at the conclusion of another great episode of the Midwest Outdoors podcast. I want to thank Jalen and Dumper Dan for joining us this week. I want to thank everyone at Midwest Outdoors and Fish Daddy. As always, I want to thank you guys, the viewers, for tuning in and watching. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps us. I appreciate it. And hey, we got plenty of shows coming up this summer. So come back, sit down, and relax and enjoy the show. We will see you guys next time on the Midwest Outdoors Podcast. Mm-hmm.